everyone hope you're all doing well today I have a little video a little tip I guess uh, something that I've been doing for a long time and I wanted to share it with you as you all know I usually buy a lot of food in large uh, this is actually one of the small bags I just picked up a few more of these and I picked up another huge bag of rice I think it's about 30 pounds of rice if not more uh, I'll tell you exactly how much it is the rice is 45 pounds but I don't just want to keep food stored away in a bag like this because these bags are made for you to consume quickly. If you want to do long storage, you need to really pack it well. And it all has to do with the not getting little buggies in your food. So food storage, you got to really know how to do it. Otherwise, you're going to mess up. If you're trying to do it for long-term storage, you need to make sure that there is no air whatsoever. And when you buy these, trust me, it comes with a little handle and there's lots of air in it. So these are either meant like for restaurants where they buy a bag like this and basically it's consumed in a day or two. Or if you want to store it, you got to do it properly. And it's always a good idea to have something extra at home. Say you live in an apartment and you say, well, how do I store away food in an apartment? I would like to do some extra storage but I don't have the place. Well, you could always buy those plastic bins that you slip under a bed. I know it sounds crazy because you're putting food under a bed, but if you have these plastic bins, you could store food that way and you don't have to have a crazy amount of food, but always just in case you can't work or just in case you get sick and you can't go to, uh, you have no one going to a grocery store for you. Mind you, today you could always order in. But with our crazy world today, I'm not even going to say more than that. That's all I'm going to say. I think it's a good idea to store some food. My mom used to do it all the time. There was always food in the house. The house always had an abundance. And the only thing she really did do groceries uh, was to buy fresh stuff like fresh vegetables and some fruit because everything else she basically had at home and she would always rotate which is a good thing anyhow I'm gonna show you how to do it so you want to bag these what you can do is buy I'm gonna show you mylar bags but you want to be able to get the air out so you do need oxygen absorbers and that's a quick and easy way to do it you would fill up your mylar bag and then you put one of these in there and in time this just absorbs all the oxygen you take most of the oxygen out yourself but this will help take the rest of the oxygen out that's one of the ways to do it but i use a food saver and i use an oxygen absorber and what i do use are these food saver bags which i'm going to show you i have a roll here now they come in uh, the smaller bags like the width of this bag or they come even bigger I think I have one right here where it's a lot bigger so you can actually fill it up a lot more but if you're putting like say I want to fill this up with rice because I have a super big bag of rice sometimes the rice will puncture this bag and that becomes a problem because once you introduce air then your rice is going to go stale, especially if it's like a jasmine rice. A lot of rices have like these natural oils in it. You don't want to ruin your food that you're preserving, right? You want to be able to go there years from now and say, okay, I'm going to pull out a bag of rice and it's going to taste as good as the day you bought it. So just putting rice in this is not the best idea for the reason that rice is so sharp. And I've done it before where I put rice in bags like this. And the rice eventually, uh, not that it will puncture it right away, but stacking food on top of each other, it's like you're bound to make a little hole somewhere. And that's all you need is a little hole and you're done. So what I do, and I'm going to show you what I do, very simple. Now, I'm bagging lentil right now. What I do is I go out and buy, now you could get, you could get these at the dollar store, brown lunch bags. Or you can buy them on Amazon. It's up to you where you want to get them. But I get a brown paper bag like this. Now I'm making, uh, today I'm making smaller bags where I can just grab one of these and take it with me if I need to. And then I also make larger bags. So you're saying, well, you're wasting a lot of plastic. Like I said, this is food storage. I'm not worried about plastic when you're storing food because of 
because of emergencies. You can recycle these. That's a good thing. So when you're done, it could go into a recycle bin. So it's not so bad. Okay, so but this is not a zero waste. This is more for storage just in case something happens and our life goes to the dumps. So here we go. Okay, so you can get smaller ones like this or you could get the very large bags where you can make one big bag because once you open one of these, you're good for a while. And the other ones are more if you want to travel and bring it with you somewhere else then you could grab one of these little bags it's easier for you to grab especially if you're doing like a hiking trip it's a fun thing to have too or a camping trip you could always cook this over the fire lentil takes two minutes to cook so anyhow before i drag this longer than it should be what i do is i measure my bag to the size that i want because i'm making a small batch i'm only doing four cups of lentil so what that paper bag really does is it gives it an extra layer in here and uh, it doesn't puncture your bag, especially when it's rice. Lentil is not so bad because it goes flat, but I like the idea that I have the bag because uh, once I open this up, I can't really reseal it. This way I can bend it down and then slip it back in the bag wherever I am. Okay, so I am going to cut my bag. And by the time I seal it there, there, I'm going to cut it up to here. After a while, you know exactly what size you're doing because it's going to be pretty thick. This might even be too small. We'll see. Sometimes I get excited and I mess up. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write down on my bag. So this way I know I'm going to write down that it is brown lentil. Today's date, which is June 2022, and that I have four cups of this in my bag. And then I take my measuring cup and I am going to fill this bag. Now, like I said, if you're making bigger, if you're making bigger bags, you need bigger round bags. And it doesn't have to be exact. There's a couple of extra. I've already made some, so like I'm ready to yeah. Okay, so that's four cups right now that I did. And like I said, I like to be in the safe side where I don't want to have any oxygen in there. Because oxygen causes things to go and you don't want that because those buggies are naturally in there. So by putting this, I'm gonna stick it right in. This is gonna start removing oxygen from my bag. And I'm gonna press this down and I have my little bundle. So I'm just gonna put that there for now. And I have my food saver. You get the gift, right? Okay, so I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna seal one side. Oh, I should lock it in. And that's going to seal my bag. That's because I have the roll. You could buy them already. Bags where it's sealed on one side, but they cost a little more. I'd rather do it myself. Open it up. There's my seal. Nice and tight. And now I'm going to take this bag. And hopefully I didn't cut it too short. Okay, we have our bag in there. I'm going to lift it up. And we're going to place that there. I do a lot of backpacker meals also. Okay, this is not going anywhere now. Okay, so a machine like this, I actually got this on Amazon. It wasn't expensive. And I know it's a little investment. Uh, I think it's about, well, anyhow, I'll put a link for you. They're not that expensive. 
uh, if you buy something maybe a brand name where it's a little you know you're paying for the name then of course we're talking hundreds of dollars some of them are even bigger than this they're fancier I really don't care this one has the accessories uh, the accessory where if I want to use to seal jars I can do it so I could actually put this lentil in a jar and then seal it if I want to keep mason jars but these are so more it's more convenient for me because jars there's so many places you could put jars this I could take it put it back in that big bag and I know it's all lentil just by looking at the large bag rather than having to go through it or if you have shelves already made somewhere uh, you can lay these on shelves uh, without the larger bag but I mean however you want to store your food remember if you don't have a big place you could be putting this under your bed in one of those large flat Tupperwares and when you have this extra food you know you feel a little more secure if something happens we live in a world that's a little crazy and I'm not gonna mention anything but we do live in a messed up world I'm from Canada and our country is not as great as it used to be so we're gonna leave it at that just good idea to have food storage like I said you don't have to have a crazy amount of food storage but a little bit of food storage is always good and we never touch this unless we have to that means um, this is just in case of emergency because if you're gonna store it away and then consume it you're always storing away food uh, if you're trying to build a large pantry then I say keep buying when things are on special and then you could store it uh, you could buy uh, lentil rice any kind of grain you want uh, you could even buy wheat grains that if you can't find flour you could if you have a blender you could turn it into flour there's so many things that you can do and like I said I was raised always making sure there was food in the house and not that we had to uh, worry about it so that's the way I do it and that's the way I raise my kids so it's a good thing to have even if you're storing a little bit of it and one of these is really a great thing to have now like I said if you don't have these you could buy oxygen absorbers these are small ones but they have even bigger ones and I don't know if you've ever seen it but if you put this in a mylar bag you could actually use um, you put your grains and your oxygen absorbers inside uh, your mylar bag you can actually use like a hot iron for your hair to seal that and eventually while well, you try and get most of the air out when you're when you're doing it but eventually you're gonna see these oxygen absorbers just suck the air out of the bag so that's a cheaper way of doing it but they're not that cheap either so what I do is I buy these little ones and I use this this is always at home the only thing I have to do is buy my bags and I've got rolls of these and I still have rolls of these because for $20 you could get two large rolls and it's going to be good for a while because you're not going to be putting everything in like this right there's things that you might have to freeze there's things you might have to dry up and if things are dry you could actually put them here I'm going to show you for instance uh, parsley uh, if you dehydrate it you can put it in a paper bag and you can leave it the way it is like you don't have to really do anything because your parsley is already dried up see it's dry so leaving it in here it just dries up even more if you ever leave parsley out eventually it shrivels up and then it turns dry so uh, you can dehydrate spinach and put it in a brown paper bag like this and just make a little with a little staple gun well, not a staple gun with a little stapler you could staple it shut and you could have a whole bunch of uh, spinach dried up and then when you want to make a dish you just take a handful and throw it in the only thing is that when it's in a paper bag like this if you're moving things around you tend to crush it uh, you have to be more careful if it's in a paper bag this now is an herb it's not a problem for me because I use it um, if I have too much parsley I do dry some up and then I use it during the uh, the week and the day these are mangoes these are mangoes that I dried up look how beautiful these are you could either eat them like a like a leather Ooh, I got a little sticker 
that I grabbed somewhere. Okay, uh, you could either eat them as leather or you can throw it in food. So there's many things that you can do. And these paper bags come really handy. If you have a Dollar Tree or a Dollar Store near your house, uh, picking some of these is great. Anyhow, so I'm going to show you. I started this morning. Erica, I did my workout. Then Erica went to work out. It's a good time to do it. I already have all my brown lentil. I still have more that I got to pack. But four cups, and I have more. I still have more in my bag. I already have, like, I'd say I'd have about maybe eight to ten bundles like this that I could put in my pantry. And this, like I said, I am not going to touch. I do have a date on it, so I'm going to consume my oldest ones if I have to. But these I'm not going to consume unless I really, really have to. Otherwise, I have bags already open in my pantry that I use up. But what a great way to do it. And now I'm going to be hitting my big, large bag of rice. And I have another one. This is the brown lentil. I have green lentil that I picked up yesterday. So I'm going to be bagging those. But it's just a great idea to have the brown bag in, especially when it comes to the rice. I'll show you. This is my rice bags. I do six cups at a time. I could even do more. But if I didn't have this brown bag, those little tips, especially if it's a long grain rice, it'll go right through these bags. And this here, it's like a rock. I can't even explain it to you. They're like rocks. They're like bricks. I could build a house with these things. So great way to store it. You'll never get any bugs whatsoever if you store your food this way. And then, of course, when you open it up, you're going to wash it, and then you're going to consume it. But nothing's going to happen to these. They're not going to go stale. Nothing's going to happen to these. But you have to seal them right. So I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say I love you. I'm sorry I stretched it out more than I should have. If I have any little tips that I do that I think is very handy, I want to share it with all of you. Because I know some of you are already preparing and putting food away because our world, eh, not the best one to live in when it comes to, uh, look at the prices of gas. Like, it is crazy. This is crazy. So when you can save money and buy things, like you have to find a depot where they have food in large bags, you're going to save money. And I tell you, you're gonna, if you're buying it in large bags, you're going to save money. You will save money. If you're going to do this, go to a place where you could buy large bags of either grains, large bags of rice. It's a lot cheaper. Look at the price of a small bag of rice and then go look. If you go like to one of your uh, local Asian markets, they sell those big 50 pound bags of rice. Uh, you could get a bag for $30 even less sometimes. Sometimes you could get it for like $25, $25 and you're getting 50 pounds of rice that you can store away compared to a bag of rice that you're almost paying ten dollars for let me tell you you do save money and it's just good to know that you have some extra food for your family just in case i always say just in case and if i don't consume this in my lifetime my kids will have a beautiful pantry that's the way i see it anyhow i'm gonna say i love you and uh, don't be afraid, don't be scared, enjoy life of course, but always be prepared, that's what I say. Always make sure that you and your family are safe. And I'm gonna say I love you, and I'm gonna see you in my next video.